G'day guys, welcome to the channel, my name's Tim, and on today's episode, we're going to dispel the myth that Bitcoin is going to reach a peak at the end of 2021, just because it reached a peak at the end of 2013 and at the end of 2017. And today I'm going to show you why this time it really is different. Okay, so let's have a look at the data and see exactly why I believe it's unlikely we'll reach a peak in December or late this year. Okay, let's get stuck in. So on the screen, I've got the S&P 500, a monthly chart, and I've got the 30 month moving average. And you can see that the S&P bounces off the 30 month moving average roughly every three to four years. Now we've gone through this a few times and just quickly, I'll show you the Dow Jones again, very, very quickly. You can see that over the course of history, this is down in 1942, uh, right to the current day, with the, with the Dow Jones, you can see that it does bounce off this same moving average every four years, almost like clockwork throughout the whole history. You know, there's a few periods where, where it might bounce every two years or it might extend a little bit longer, but for the most part, and especially over the last decade, which is when Bitcoin has been around, it's been bouncing off this moving average every four years. And you can see some of my other videos to see where I, I tie this into Bitcoin and the, and the Bitcoin four year cycle as well. All right. So let's get back to the S&P 500. So you can see it does the same thing where it bounces off the moving average every three to four years. Now this here was the COVID crash, which was probably not scheduled, but we did V-shape recovery out of that very, very quickly. And it's almost like it didn't happen. Just look at how, how powerful the market has been since the COVID crash. So it, it almost didn't happen. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to overlay Bitcoin in a minute and just show you how it relates to these correction dates and we'll measure the time frame from when it corrected to when we peak. And I think that might give a bit of a clue about where we are in the current cycle. So what I'll do is I'll put some vertical lines in here. So right here, September, you can see that down the bottom, this is a monthly chart, September 2011, there was a dip here in the S&P 500. Now, right here, we had a double bottom, but we'll pick the first one, which is September 2015. Now, you'll notice that is exactly four years, <laughs> September 2011 to September 2015. And now the next dip we had here was in December 2018, which is not quite four years. It's roughly 3.3 years between those gaps. And now uh, we're waiting for the next major correction date uh, in, in the stock markets. At this stage, let's consider the COVID crash as a black swan event. So I might just change the color. I'll make that, I'll make it gray. I'll make it not quite as thick. So we can still see that it did exist and it was a correction date, uh, but it was really a black swan event that we, we V-shaped recovery out of that straight away. Cool. Let's add in Bitcoin. Okay. Now I'll turn this into a logarithmic chart just so we can see them both on the screen at once. Now, because Bitcoin has been much more dynamic than the S&P 500, it is difficult to have them both on the screen uh, because the S&P looks like a straight line. And that's why I've put these red lines in because we did see those were the correction dates for the S&P 500. So let's see how Bitcoin compares. Now, as you can see, the correction dates here for Bitcoin were very similar. So we had a, a bottom here. We had a bottom in this region here, right near the correction date from the stock market, right here again, December 2018. Then we had the COVID crash right here as well. So you can see the bottoms of Bitcoin all tend to line up with the stock market major corrections. Now, what's interesting, and I've already measured this in, but I'll, I'll put this in again. Let's measure the time frames from when it corrected to when we reached a peak. So I'll grab the date range indicator. Let's go from here to the peak. And you'll notice that's 26 months. So the 2013 peak took 26 months from the major market correction date until we reached the first major peak. Now, if you wanna measure this mini peak that we had in 2013, let's do that as well. So that took 19 months. Okay, so let's have a look at the 2017 peak. So from this major correction date we saw with the stock markets, let's measure that out from here to here it was exactly 27 months, okay, to that date. Okay, so let's have a look at the 2021 peak. Now, currently, from this major correction date in December 2018 to the peak here in April, 
was about 28 months. So you can see 26, 27, 28. So it's a very, very similar distance from the major market correction dates until we reach a peak. Now, what's interesting here is in 2013, it actually took from the peak until we reached this, this uh, major correction date with the stock market, that was 22 months. So almost two years, 26 months up and 22 months down. So that is exactly four years. Unbelievable. Okay. And then measuring from the peak here to the correction date, 12 months. So that was over two years up. So about 2.3 years up and one year until the correction date. And now we are 28 months. So again, about 2.33 years from the major market correction date. Now, if we follow a similar pattern to what's happened in the past, it was 22 months until we corrected and then it was 12 months. So let's go from this peak and just see 12 months would bring us to April, 2022 and 22 months would bring us to February, 2023. So that's a fair way away. So it really depends on when we have the next major market correction date. And from this distance to this distance was, was four years. This distance to this distance was about 3.3. So let's say it went four years. That would mean December 2018 to December 2022 would be four years, which would bring us to a date here. Let's make that one We'll make this a different color because it hasn't happened. It's just speculation. So what we can conclude from this is that so far the peaks have all occurred between 26 months and 28 months from the major market correction dates. Now, if we were to peak, say in December, that would bring us to, and I'll just measure it out, 36 months if we were to peak in December, which is a lot longer than what happened in 2013 and what happened in 2017. So the argument that 2021 is following the same pattern as 2013 and 2017, that both peaked at the end of the year, it doesn't really stack up. It contradicts itself because if it is to do that, it's actually peaking a lot further out than what happened in 2013 and 2017. Of course, at the moment, this is all speculation. We don't, we can't really tell the future. There's nothing to stop Bitcoin going up from here and peaking at the end of 2021. But if we are to compare it with 2013 and also 2017, then we can't really use the argument that it will peak at the end of the year. So hopefully that made some sort of sense. Uh, it made sense to me in some way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe really enjoying the feedback that I'm getting. And it's uh, it's also been great to, to see what's going on on Twitter. So you can follow me there also at technicaltimcr1. So until next time, I'm Tim and cheers.